Oh, thank you. A bit louder, please. If you see me mistyping, you know, I would be very grateful for any help there. Um, hmm, uh, hmm. There we go. Okay, good. So I'm logged in, finally in the server. Um, and I will never forget my password again now. Um, so the first thing that we saw is that lots of people started programming, eager to program, that's very good, but uh, they started programming immediately. And they started, you know, writing uh, a file, sometimes like hello.cpp, uh, for instance, and they started programming immediately there. So, um, um, like this. And then they try to compile this, or they, they, they compile this as well. Um, and, oops, they write this, of course. Always save, oops, cancel, always save. Uh, your code. So then they see that you know they have a CPP file, which would, which they then co could compile if there was something in there like a main function. Um, the problem then is <clears throat> after re writing and writing lots of code there, you uh, what might have happened is that you then detected okay actually the assignment said that we should have made a directory. Um, and the directory should be named ex from ex uh, exercise 001. Uh, we should go to that uh, directory, and there we should have this file, right? And then the, pr the first problem is already how do I move the solution that I already have, the many lines of code that I've written there, into the right directory. Now, if you know Linux, or if you know the command line, you know probably that there is this uh, move command. We've disabled it for you, unfortunately. Um, we're very paranoid about these things. Um, but what you can do is, if you go back, to the root directory um, and you want to copy hello.cpp in example 001 you can copy it with a cp command and this is one of the commands that you can have um, and then you basically say what you have what you want to copy so the file hello.cpp and where do you want to copy it to namely the uh, directory x so for um, exercise 001 and then you can also rename it, of course, because we didn't want it to be called hello.cpp, but hi.cpp. So we'll just call it hi.cpp. And now there are two versions. There's your old version, which is still hello.cpp, and the new one, which is in um, exercise 001. Now, this one is not that necessary anymore, and then you can remove it. So you can just remove hello.cpp, and this is the same as moving the file from the root directory into your... Uh, ex uh, exercise 001 directory, okay? Um, so if we go there now, we find that we have the hi.cpp and it is exactly this here. Um, we'll have to get out of nano because nano is still um, fixed on this hello.cpp. So if you see there, we also have uh, there nothing anymore. We just go there and then we continue writing on our hi.cpp file, right? The next thing is... Um, you, you write, uh, some of you have already C or C++ experience. Some of you see that we can definitely see uh, where you see printf commands and such. Um, what is very important, however, is that um, when you write your code, that if you have your main function, we'll see what a function is later, but what your code definitely should have is a main function. If you have your main function, it's always nice that you indent your code, that you basically, all the commands that come after or that belong into the main function, that is part of this compound, you know, where the curly brackets are around, that you basically there, um, so for instance, we'll just do return, then I don't have to type anything more, right? So that is my, 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 my program. Does it compile? Let's see. Let's output high. Yes, it compiles. Um, that, that this indentation is there. If you keep on writing everything from the left of the line, then it gets unreadable very, very fast. So please do indentation. The next thing is, um, if you have this and you do the check, so the check command will show you how far you are in your assignments. So in the check command, lots of things are being uh, checked for. That's why it's... Um, it's having this this uh, this name. Let's clear and do that again, so we have a bit of an overview. So it will check for whether the header is there or not. 
it's important that's what where every assignment starts with important start with this header and the header looks something like this so it doesn't look like this let's put that away um, so it looks like um, a multi-line comment that's why this uh, uh, slash star and star slash are for then your name should be there somewhere um, your student ID should be there somewhere and this student ID is checked for so the ID is really important um, student ID and then a description of what you want to program and that we'll do later as, as well so and this is basically a, a in comments so a multi-line comments um, and once you have that save that and do check again you will see that the header is correct uh, we don't check for the right name because some of your names are are um, complex <laughs> so there are loads of accents especially the accents are very hard to check for automatically um, but we do check for the student ID mainly because later you will be writing programs with multiple files and we've seen that some people lend their code from others, some way or some form, and then making sure that you start with a header that belongs to you kind of avoids that or make sure that we push you to program yourself, right? So just one of those chairs, yeah. That is important. Now, as you can see, everything else is perfect. However, what is not perfect is that the code does not work. And that is, of course, kind of bad. It does compile, but it doesn't work because what we expected you to do in this assignment is a certain thing. You know, ask for user input, do something with that user input, and give an output. If it doesn't work, there is this red thing here, and it will show you that for a particular input, we expected something, and we didn't get anything as the output. Because if you run hi, well, we can compile again. Hi.cpp. Uh, if we run that, so dot slash is for the local directory and an executable in there, and then hi is our executable that you want to return, and it doesn't do anything. It basically just returns the code zero, which we've seen last week. You can just you can still get to. This is basically something for the operating system to see whether a particular program was exited in a normal fashion or with an error. In this case, it was exited with a normal fashion, and then usually it's a zero that gets returned. Right, that's that's the only thing. So we should still make this code work, right? And that is the other thing. Um, what we should code here is something that, for instance, if we ask or if we, if the input uh, for a user is five, the output should be zero dot zero six four. That's what should be in the output somewhere, and that is what we check for. And this thing is also random, as you see. So here we asked for fourteen. Here we ask for five. There's this output is constantly different. And we also check for multiple things. This is the first error that for us, uh, it went wrong, right? So make sure for your exercise or for your assignments that everything here is green. Even if everything is green, there will still be complaints, most likely from the tutors about your codes. If you, for instance, don't do this indentation. And the other thing that we will definitely check for already with this assignment is that you uh, comment your codes. So wherever you use something abnormal, and this is the first assignment, so almost everything is abnormal for you now, or should be, you should comment why you're doing certain things. You know, So one of the things you will have been doing is um, you uh, start a variable, and like something like this. Um, now, why do you call it P? What does P stand for? And why is it here, this int? is one very good question, for instance. Uh, what could you have been doing? Now, in a way, it's unfair because we saw only this int and a float, I think, example so far, so far. And I already told you that the examples that I showed you last time were more, of, more or less uh, a preview of what was to come. Today, we will see what can be done or what types of variables you can initialize here or you can use in your code. Um, a bit later, for instance, you will do something with that p. You know, you might say p equals p divided by 13 or something like that. Now also there, you need to comment why this is the case. And if you do this, then you will see that you will generate more errors. <laughs> so basically, if you do uh, check on this, um, it still doesn't work. But after a while, it might work. But what you have done then is generate a lot of errors on the CPP lint check. Just uh, to refresh your memory, CPP lint is basically what 
the big companies use to make sure that all their coders, all their programmers program in the same style. And it is very finicky. So it will complain again and again about the smallest things. So if we uh, see what, or if you want to know what cpplint complains about, we just do cpplint in our program. So hi.cpp. And then we get a list of errors. So on hi in hi.cpp on line 8, we have a redundant black line at the start of the codes. So over here. So this line is, is blank. That should not be. So we should get rid of this line. Or on line 9, it ends with a white space. I mean, this is borderline uh, yeah, bad. No, but, but I mean, th this is not bad at all. But for CPP, this is very important that we don't use too many white spaces there, for instance. And for lines 9 and 10, there should be two characters between the comments and the code. You know, finicky things like this will happen. And if you solve all of those things, um, you will get cpplint uh, with no errors or with nothing to complain about. And then uh, in check, uh, eventually when your code will be working, everything should be green. And if everything is green, you basically know already that this code is very likely to be passing and uh, to be giving the full marks for your assignments, right? So those are very important things. So even if everything is green, there are two things to note. The first thing is to make sure that to comment your codes and comment your codes you know, ruthlessly, too much. There's no such thing as too many comments, right? Um, on the other hand, make sure that you indent your code so that it's nicely readable. If main here would have 20 lines and all of those lines would be like this, um, it would be very hard to read this code. So it would, it's better to indent your codes. And later we'll see much more like if there are if then statements or other statements that you use indentation really well. Okay, those are just... <laughs> The main, the main remarks I had um, from last from last time, basically. So this is, this is what you should keep in mind. If you keep that in mind, your assignment will get the full marks. 